Welcome to today's episode of Financial Fluency. Today, I have Jen Groover with me, who is a serial entrepreneur and has been tagged as Success Magazine's One Woman Brand. Hi, Jen. How are you doing? Hi. Great. How are you? I'm good. It's so nice to have you here. And there are actually so many things I could introduce you as that <laughs> I was kind of like, where do I even start? So can you talk to us some about what you do, the businesses you run? Sure. Yeah. Give us some background. So I've been an entrepreneur since I graduated from college, which was in 1995, way before entrepreneurship was cool like it is today. Uh, so my background is varied in many different industries. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. My first business ever was in the fitness industry. And in 95, the fitness industry was in its infancy, not nearly where it is today. Uh, and then I've since started a handbag company, uh, an empowerment, girl, uh, empowerment brand for young girls called Leader Girls. Uh, I'm partners in a sports management, sports entertainment company to technology platform. So that's part of my serial entrepreneurial life and multiple brands. But I'm also um, a motivational speaker. Um, I've been speaking for 20 years now. My obsession is human potential, how everyone can become the best version of themselves in every aspect of life. And um, author, my next book's coming out later this year called Operator's Manual for Life. And <laughs> we all need that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it came to me at 3 a.m. and I'm like, that's it, that sums it up. Uh, and then I've been a contributor to the media for over a decade um, in topics anywhere from entrepreneurship and business to uh, human potential. Wow, that's fantastic. So you know what's funny? I was talking to someone the other day about this show, which it's called Financial Fluency, and I started out really focused on finance. But as time's gone on, the focus has become in interviewing women working outside of traditional employment. Mm. Because the question I had when I graduated college in 98, so I'm very close to you, was, oh my God, how do I live? How do I make a life? How do I make a living? Mm -hmm. And I'm fascinated by all the different ways that people do it. And it sounds like you've explored a lot of those personally. <laughs> I have, and I will continue to explore more because once I'm comfortable, I need to make myself uncomfortable again. Uh, yeah. So I will always continue to really figure out how to leverage. I mean, licensing is a huge part of my business model. Um, and how, how does that work? Oh, well, <laughs> I love that you ask. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize licensing is one of the most undervalued way to leverage your time and, and effort. So basically you create a brand mm -hmm. and a, a product line, or it could be a service as well, but usually it's a product line. And, um, so for example, I invented technology in handbags, which was the world's first compartmentalized handbag. And I put my efforts really strongly into building the brand really quickly. Um, had a stack of, of media this big right out of the gate because I would tell the story of how I invented it, which was really, I was a new mom of twins and I was overwhelmed. And I took my dishwasher tray out of my dishwasher and I stuck it in my handbag to compartmentalize things. So <laughs> the story held a lot of weight. And uh, once I got to a certain level of sales, I hit a million dollars in the first year of business, which is unheard of for women owned businesses. And um, I had a licensing deal 18 months in, which means a company bigger than me that basically rents the usage of another brand's name and technology, manufactures my products. They have their in-house in sales team. They have their in-house marketing team. So it basically says to the, the brand owner, in my case, just be the front face, be the spokesperson of the brand, of your own brand, and we'll do all the heavy lifting, which to me is the dream come true because I don't like the manufacturing side of the business, the fulfillment, the marketing, I obviously love, and the, the sales too, but it basically multiplies you by hundreds to thousands of times over so that you grow a lot more quickly. So in that next year, I was able to hit 10 million, which I would have never probably been able to do on my own. Wow. That's fantastic. When you said licensing, for some reason, the first thing that popped into my head was that band Kiss. Because <laughs> I once heard that they made far more from licensing, you know, their, their faces, the image of the painted faces than they ever did from record sales or touring. Because right. the products kept selling, you know, far beyond them. But this sounds much more specific. It's not like all kinds of products being made with your face on it. It's your specific product, but you didn't have to manufacture it. Right, exactly. Uh, once I got it to a certain 
point of proof. Same mm -hmm. with my Leader Girls brand. I actually licensed that right out of the gate, basically off of a storyboard mm -hmm. of what the brand was and what the mission was. Because once you have a successful brand, people trust you more <laughs> to come up with other brands. But, you know, Kiss is a, is a great example. I mean, if you walk in any store and you see a t-shirt, a Kiss t-shirt, they're not, Kiss isn't manufacturing that. Their manufacturing partner is. So they're licensees and licensors. And mm -hmm. so Kiss is giving the right to someone to manufacture that t-shirt and just pay them a royalty. So that's what we call mailbox money. How much of your revenue comes from licensing? Um, I'd say half. Half. Wow. Yeah, the Across other half. different businesses or just for that one business? For all of them. Um, the other part would come from speaking engagements, um, book sales, which is kind of like licensing in a way, um, as well as the pop-up stores. Our, our business model is... Um, partnerships with big brands um, and then also investor in other companies which essentially is also like a licensing where you're getting a percentage of, of earnings so mm -hmm. um, my key is always how do I duplicate myself my, my strength is my ideas and my networking skills and pulling people together to make bigger things happen mm -hmm. so I like to focus on what I'm good at and partner with people that are good at what I'm not good at Sounds like you're very good at that. So <laughs> can I ask a question? What was the very first business that you started? It was um, a fitness center in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, and that's where I quickly learned about service-based business. And I realized if I'm not here, I'm not making money. And I don't know if I want to trade time for money the rest of my life. I want to figure out how to uh, leverage myself. So in the fitness industry, you can, in the sense of selling, you know, supplements, those types of products. Um, but, but you can't really in a service-based business, people become very reliant on you or like my clients wouldn't come in if I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was on vacation, they'd take vacation. Or if I wasn't teaching a class, people wouldn't show up. So, um, that's when I started to really learn about multiple streams of income. Uh, as a business model, so I wasn't always going to have to trade time for money. Mm -hmm. When did you write your first book? Uh, in 2013. It's called What If and Why Not? And it's all about the psychology of transforming your fears into action. So we're all going to have fears, but how do you look at your fear? Like, I'll have more fear of regret than I have a failure. So that fear of regret is so much worse than the fear of trying something and doing something. And even if you don't have the results that you maybe anticipated, you can have better results or you could have learned so much in the journey that you wind up creating something totally different. So it's really about the psychology of taking everything negative and turning it into a positive. Hmm. That sounds good. I'm going to check that one out myself. How many books have you written? My second one is coming out this fall. Okay. Um, and then um, my next one is coming out shortly after that, which is basically um, inspired by my PBS special called Empowered. And it's all of these principles of living a more empowered life. So some of those principles are in the operator's manual for life. Um, mm -hmm. This one's just more of a tabletop visual gift type book. The third one is called mm -hmm. hash, Hashtag Empowered. Nice. That is great. And I know from looking at your bio here that you're also um, involved in the Accelerator for Global Entrepreneurs Council. Can you tell me some about that? So that was started at the UN um, by the Entrepreneurs Council, uh, where they said, how do we solve all these world problems by bringing more entrepreneurs together, uh, creating collaboration, creating think tanks. So everyone on the Entrepreneurs Council for the UN chose three people uh, to all come together for this global accelerator. So the, the mandate is really to choose a topic that you're really good at and then choose a topic that you're not necessarily very versed in, um, where your ignorance can actually lead to innovation. Uh, so we get to sit in all these meetings. For me, um, economic empowerment around women and entrepreneurs is, is easy. It's my circle. Um, but then I would wound up being in this healthcare one where they were talking about, like, how do you get all of these, um, these drugs that are needed to certain parts of Africa when people in Africa don't trust the drugs that are going there? 
So I didn't even know that was a problem. I had no idea. So um, my ignorance is hoped and everyone else in the room, there's people that know a lot about it. And then the people who don't know a lot about it, the ignorance is hoped to bring a, some insight of innovation. So it's really cool. Um, but basically the, the goal is to create more innovation around solutions to these problems. Hmm, that sounds fascinating. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Has, what's come out of it so far? Um, you know, I, I think a lot. Um, you know, we get reports consistently. Um, basically solving one of the, the problem that I just talked about, how do you, uh, the one I got with the, the drugs in Africa, is how do you create a, a better communication system to build that trust. So getting into the perspective of people that are there. So we actually brought in people um, from Africa to get their perspective of what, what they're thinking we're doing. They, they thought we were trying to kill them, right, with the drugs instead of help them. So knowing that, now we can communicate more effectively that we're trying to help you. Mm-hmm. Or child trafficking is another huge, uh, massive progress that's happened from um, this global accelerator around child trafficking from the UN and, and just number one awareness. And all of us starting to tell people in our community, it happens everywhere, to a lot of these fundraisers and documentaries being made to uh, more little groups of activists coming together as a, a greater whole, a collective whole. Hmm, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. So this sounds like a, is this part of your give back strategy, part of what you do to help the community in the world? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd say, you know, in everything that you do as a speaker, as someone who is an executive coach, um, I speak a lot for free at fundraisers. Um, I speak to you know this organization called back of my feet to the homeless people and teach them emotional intelligence um so basically teaching them how to heal themselves and get out of their pain so that they can progress forward and come back into society um, at the level of a a contributor Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, to you know my latest company jumpstart connect which helps accelerate the success of entrepreneurs in our society because the more successful entrepreneurs we have in our society, the more innovation we're going to have, the more limited beliefs are going to be disrupted, the more social problems are going to be solved uh, to, you know, technology innovation. So I believe that entrepreneurs are a huge part of healing the world and turning around um, poverty and really accelerating the economy in a way that we want to keep seeing growth, uh, but in a purposeful way that is um, healing society instead of separating it. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of have this feeling with the rise of entrepreneurship, especially among women in the last, in the last decade, really. It seems like it's such a more engaged workforce than people just, you know, sitting at a desk mindlessly data inputting or doing computer work without going out and interacting with people as much as entrepreneurs seem to have to in order to grow their businesses. Yeah. And it's supportive as well. So uh, versus that mindset about like in corporate America, there's only one corner office and there's only one title. I believe that we, I know all my girlfriends um, in New York and, and in Philly, the same thing where it's the more successful I am, the more successful you are and the more successful you are. And how do we help each other? And what do you need? And how can I introduce you to somebody? And, and so we'll do, you know, just nights, girls nights out or we're going to get drinks, but getting drinks is social. At the same time, we're saying, how can I help you? What are you working on next? Let's stay abreast of what each other's working on so we can keep doing the introductions that are necessary. So I can see what you're doing from afar on social media, but having this conversation helps me connect dots faster once a month. Mm -hmm. That's great. Can you tell us more about Jumpstart, if that's your current thing that you're working on? Yeah, so Jumpstart Connect is the first ever pop-up store for entrepreneurs. And um, I created it from teaching entrepreneurship for so long and writing a book on entrepreneurship. And you know, the first one, what if and why not was really focused to entrepreneurs and doing TV segments on entrepreneurship and focused on small business. And I realized, you know, fear is the thing that holds people back the most. And, 
And the more you can educate someone, the more you can eliminate fear. And not knowing what to do next is one of the biggest fears. Like, I have an idea, what do I do next? And so if you could give someone essentially training wheels and give them a, a map, a roadmap to where to go next and where to go next and where to go next, then you're going to accelerate their success and eliminate these fears and give them momentum. And with momentum, you have confidence. So I would do these segments where I'd say, start your business in six steps or scale your marketing campaign in 10 steps. And so I'd give them not just action steps, but resources to use. So I'd give them links and names of companies so it would eliminate their research time too, or they're just not knowing what you don't know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, to stick with email marketing campaigns for a second, if you say to someone new in the, um, as an entrepreneur, you said, oh, just go create a, a funnel for that. They're like, a funnel? Like, what do you mean a funnel? What's a funnel? <laughs> so, so they just don't know what they don't know. So if you say, oh, well, there's this company called ClickFunnels, and there's this guy you can follow, and, and then there's this infusion sock, which is the next level, and, and you just give them the guide map to it, they're going to figure it out faster. So the stores essentially curate all the business services that are needed from start through scale. So it's not just brand new startups. Um, and we're connecting them. It's like speed dating with your business services. So you mm -hmm. go station, 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 station with all these brands that are going to help you grow the company and you're getting it for free, all this information and insight. And when you walk in the front door, you're actually greeted by an entrepreneur expert who mentors you through the station to station process so that they can bridge the gap. Let's just say UPS is there and UPS is doing insane, amazing things right now in innovation, far out of shipping space um, from investing in tons of entrepreneurs for search engine optimization uh, to packaging programs where you can get your package tested to make sure it's designed effectively to save you millions of dollars potentially a lot of times people just ship something not knowing like how much money they're really wasting by not packaging it properly um, so let's just say it's ups and ups is corporate people and most of those sales people have never been entrepreneurs so they're speaking the corporate language the entrepreneur comes in needing the entrepreneur language so the entrepreneur expert the mentor that walks around basically bridges the communication gap of why is this important? How is this going to affect your life? What's the value it's going to add? And why would you want to use their services? And so the brands love it because it, it conveys their message in, this, in the, the way an entrepreneur hears messaging. Mm -hmm. And the entrepreneur loves it because they're actually understanding all the value that's out there and they're getting the value for usually a lot less um, because the brand partners are creating different packages for everyone that goes through the stores that you couldn't necessarily get if you just went to their website. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. So one of our side businesses that my husband runs is a record label. We do vinyl records still, and we ship a ton of stuff. Oh, and I'm awesome. suddenly like, oh, is there things I don't know about UPS? They're very well maybe. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. if, 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 one of the coolest campaigns, not to get too off topic, but one of the things I was just blown away about was just brilliant. It was very entrepreneurial um, is they recognize there's so many e-com businesses that people are turning into millionaires kind of overnight. And it, and, and they thought if we could help accelerate the growth of those by giving these small business owners um, money to budget, to do a search engine optimization strategy, they'll scale faster. So let's just say, they say, okay, Jen, we're going to invest in you for three months. We'll give you a five grand a month budget. We're going to partner you with this search engine optimization agency that's approved by us. And you just pay us back in your boxes that are shipped. That's like free money. So why would UPS do it? They do it because they realize they trust the search engine optimization company that they're using. And they realize if we can get her to ramp up faster, she's going to ship more boxes and we'll just take the money back per box shipment. So instead of amazing, right? Yeah, that's amazing. I had no yeah. idea they were doing stuff like that. Yeah, some amazing stuff. Wow. Okay. So if someone is interested in taking part in your Jumpstart Connect store, because that does sound really, ex I mean, I live in rural Arizona, so I never get to go to any physical <laughs> pop-up stores anywhere ever. But um, 
but yeah, even the funnel stuff you were saying, I I limp through the idea of like, okay, I do an email that introduces this, and then I do an engagement email, and then I do it. You know, I, I've looked yeah. at some of those templates, and I've done some myself, but it's true. A lot of us who are just like doing it on our own, we don't know when, when it doesn't work, when something mm -hmm. goes wrong, we're like, Oh, you know, we can see where the opens drop off or something like that. But it's really hard to know what would really make it a better campaign without yep. an expert. Right. So, so that's what happens at the pop art store. The expert helps you figure out where you're going wrong or where you could optimize what could be better. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And, and, and it's an, a mentor that you could actually hire after the pop up store. And um, so good news for you is in the very near future, we're going to have an online virtual store. Okay, cool. Where you're going to actually get to walk through station to station to station. We'll ask you some questions in the beginning. So you'll have a mentor that's going to take you around and you're going to get to go to all these um, experiences virtually. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody's interested in going to the one in New York, because nothing, nothing beats a face-to-face -face connection. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go to jumpstartconnect.com and then sign up to go and it's free. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it physically located? It's going to be in the Soho section of um, New York City, 393 Broadway, which is like right in the heart of the Soho section. And, um, you know, you can, I, I tell people to set aside about an hour. Some people spend two to three hours because they really take their time speaking to different representatives from different brands um, and ask the questions. To, uh, you know, the, I think the silliest question is to not ask the question. So um, if you had someone's attention who is an expert at whatever it is that you're, you know, let's just stick with the email campaigns for a second. Mm -hmm. Listen, I tried this. I feel like I'm following the process and I'm just not getting open rates. Like, is it my copy? Is it my, you know, am I using the wrong email blast server? You know, maybe, you know, my, my um, server isn't, isn't recognizing them um, and they're just getting dropped into somebody's spam. And those are questions that someone could say, oh, well, let's take a look at your copy. Or mm -hmm. here's an expert that we have that does copy, contact them this week. So mm -hmm. they can troubleshoot right there and eliminate your problems quickly. That's really cool. And I have to ask because um, obviously you're doing this as a business. So you're offering your for free, you're connecting the companies with the p new entrepreneurs. What's your revenue model for the pop up store? The brands pay to be there. Um, okay. So the brands um, recognize this as, you know, basically innovation in the trade show model mm -hmm. um, where they spend a lot of money to go to trade shows and usually get very little out of it because the way a trade show is created, there's always a, a table in front of you and it's really overwhelming. So the customers walk in like, again, I don't know what I don't know. So what we'll just stick with click funnels. I don't, what is this click funnels? I don't even know what it is. I don't know it. So they walk right past it, not realizing they actually need it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we created this, matching system with the entrepreneur expert when they walk in so the entrepreneur expert can take that that fear and overwhelm and i don't need that mindset out of the equation mm -hmm. um, so the brand doesn't have to work so hard to say hey pay attention to me let me talk to you there everyone's walking in basically like awesome i want to meet everyone here uh so the brands love it we you know bring in about a thousand people in three days in each city uh, so it, for them, it's like an acceleration of filling their pipeline and growing their database. Mm -hmm. And that's a super warm audience coming to them because they've already come through you, said they want to be there, yeah. shown up in person. Yeah. That exactly. sounds like a great partnership between you and the brands to do that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> so and a date for the next one is in October? Is that right? October 10th, 11th, and 12th. And okay. um, what I love is that when people leave, they honestly feel like their life was changed. There's people that cry. There's people that come back and feed us because they felt like, I don't know what else to give you, but I need to give you something. Um, Cause their, their life was just changed. They were given hope. They were given guidance. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs feel like they're on an Island all alone and none of their friends are entrepreneurs. So they don't even know who to reach out to. And, you know, technology has helped that a lot more now where, you can watch a lot more videos on YouTube and um, 
you know, have access to a lot more books about the topic, but people still, you can read a book, but then afterwards you're like, I have a million questions now, <laughs> like that directly pertain to me. So um, we're really filling in that gap that yeah. exists. That sounds like it. And I think with some of these companies too, like, I know I've looked at Infusionsoft, but um, when you're first starting out, it's hard, to, you know, the, the monthly price tag until you're making enough revenue consistently every month to fulfill that. You don't know like what's worth the investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary to make a jump like from, you know, MailChimp to Infusionsoft yeah. free to right. paid, but you don't know how much better your sales might be with something like Infusionsoft until someone tells you. Correct. And, it, and it, some of the stores will have uh, different scales. Like if you're a startup, you should use this, like ClickFunnels. It's so much cheaper. Does some of those, much of the same things. Okay. If you're like making X amount of revenue and X amount of database, you should use Infusionsoft. And, and so we can guide people a little bit better that way too. Um, where people are maximizing their investment because if you only have a budget of a thousand dollars a month to spend on marketing, you are like, well, do I spend it on PR? Do I spend it on this kind of email campaign? Do I spend it on social media, Facebook ads? And there's a lot of confusion. And, yeah. and this is unfortunate where a lot of entrepreneurs don't make it to the level that they could have made it because they just don't know where the best investments are. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like you have an idea for a product or service, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I can do this thing, but then getting it to the people who need it, it, it that can feel so impossible. Like, yeah. even if you, you know, have done your avatar and you know who your customer is, it's like, do I spend a thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads right now? Or do I spend it on Infusionsoft or do I, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, a lot and, of us need guidance. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of it is just, you know, not having time to sit and do the really detailed research that you might need to have to do on your own online. Um, that way you just, you're meeting someone, you're talking to them, you're speed dating with them. Yeah. That sounds like a totally different situation. Yeah. <laughs> in your, in your history of doing all these different businesses, what's been your personal struggle that you've run into? Like, what did you have to overcome to get as successful as you are? Because you're obviously so successful. A lot of our listeners tend to be earlier on, um, you know, working from home kind of people. So yeah, what, what did you have to overcome to get this successful? Um, I'd say the most critical thing is mindset around money and success. Um, so I did a ton of mentorship with uh, mentors who taught me about belief systems. Um, same thing I'm teaching now to other people. I grew up in a household that money was always a fight. Um, it was a control thing. Um, if you asked for money, you were kind of shamed and made to feel uncomfortable. And it was always scarce. And, and so all these programs were in my belief systems. And until they're eradicated, until they're transformed, then you can't really change. You can have a great idea. You could force success to a degree with some hard work. But if you don't believe you're worthy of having something, if you don't believe, um, if you believe that you have to work ridiculously hard to become successful, most people just won't even try their dream at that point because they're like, well, I might as well just clock in nine to five. Um, or if you believe that, you know, only a few people in the world can be successful. And so why not me? I mean, well, I'm, I'm just as good as everybody else. So all of those thought processes um, are the most important thing to work on first. And for me, um, I was, you know, in, in the scheme of other people's eyes, I was successful. I had a business right out of college and I was a national level fitness competitor, but I was never going to make a million dollars ever in my lifetime if I maintain the same mindset that I had. So it was through all the mindset training through my mentors that, and I invested a lot in that. Um, that was my most important investment, quite honestly, um, that just kept shifting paradigm after paradigm after paradigm where it was like, why not set the goal for a million dollars or why not go for 10 and, and just creating more of an expansive belief system of what was possible and then knowing it was possible and um, not 
working in the mindset of I have to work really hard until I'm exhausted and I have no life to how do I leverage my time and money, which is hence licensing. How do I leverage myself? How do I create a business model that I'm working balanced and successful at the same time? Identifying what you're really good at and what you're not good at. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that you have twins. Yes. 13 year old twins. (laughs) How old? They're now 13. Oh, wow. So um, obviously there was a time when you were not only juggling your career and your media appearances and everything, but also baby twins. Mm -hmm. Correct. How how did that fit into this, you know, this history we now have talked about with all your businesses? When did you have your kids and was, how hard was that? So I had my daughters in 2004. They were actually the inspiration of my Butler bag company, which became my springboard to my next level success. So I actually essentially am building this brand new company in a, in a category of business. I have no idea what I'm doing (laughs) whatsoever. I can't even draw a stick figure very well. So I lacked a lot of the fundamental skills. Um, So here I am with newborn twins. They're toddlers at the time, which quite honestly are a lot harder than newborns. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm toddler twins and I'm building this company. Um, so it paid a huge part in it. It was, um, you know, Sheryl Sandberg in her book, Lean In, what a lot of people miss is um, her message about if you want to be a successful woman, marry or be in a relationship with the right supportive partner in order to be successful. So if you don't have that support system in your home, you'll probably never maximize your potential. And so my now ex-husband was so supportive and still is very supportive. We're incredibly uh, cohesive co-parents. We have an incredible relationship. And so, um, you know, that dynamic allowed me a support system that even now today, he says, Jen, those two girls look to you who they can be. They look to me for the relationship they're going to have with a man. So it's 50-50 is is really important for them to get that most out of that where, um, you know, you see a lot of the guilt go to the woman of, you know, I travel a lot. And, and I had this woman when my, my kids were in preschool say to me, are you going to whatever meeting it was? And I said, no, I'm going to be in New York. And she was like, where are your kids going to be? And I said, with their dad, the other parent. And, and I said, you know, this woman, her name is Amy. I said, you know, Amy, your husband travels twice as much as me. So he's gone out of your kid's life twice as much as I am, but you're judging me as a woman for traveling. Mm-hmm. And I said, it. so my kids went to this private school at the time. And I said, why are you paying for your daughters to go to school here? She said, so they have a better opportunity in life. And I said, interesting that you're judging the women that are paving the way for those opportunities. So we all need to work together here. I'm not judging you for not working. So, so we need to work together. Like I'm grateful you're the homeroom mom and I'm grateful that you're creating these you know, parties and parades. I don't wanna do that. It's, it's not who I am and I wanna do these other things. So we need to balance each other out as, as women, as moms. And, um, but it still happens. I mean, it still exists where, you know, no one questions a dad that's traveling for work. Um, the way people will question a mom who is, for my daughters, it's totally normal. Um, that, I mean, it'd be weird for them if I was baking chocolate chip cookies when they got home. They'd be like, who is this lady? <laughs> Why is she here? But at the same time, it affords them other experiences like traveling with me now and seeing the world. And, um, you know, one of my friends is a, you know, a big DJ for iHeartRadio. So they get to go to all these concerts and have backstage experiences. And, and so they're getting experiences that other kids couldn't have if, if I wasn't doing this. So um, I teach them that, you know, this is a trade-off for me traveling, you get this. And they're like, okay, we'll take that all day long. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I think the more examples we can see of this for our kids, the better. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Well, and in their mind, you know, they got their first Instagram account when they were 10 and I was very controlled, but I used it as a learning opportunity. And I said, okay, you know, never put anything where you are. You never show your face on your picture. Um, 
and I'm going to choose everyone you're allowed to follow. So they chose their friends and then I chose all my friends. And my friends are starting companies and launching books left and right and doing really cool things and volunteering and they're on boards and they're, you know, at these big fundraisers. And, and so my daughters were seeing all this. It was part of their world. It was just normal. And at the end of that summer, Madison said to me, mommy, I don't know what a book I'm going to write someday. And I'm like, what do you mean what book? Like for school? And she's like, no, no, my life book. And I'm like, what life book? She was like, the book everyone writes. <laughs> she thinks everyone writes a book because that's just normal. Like a, women write books, they go on television, they start companies, that's just what they do. And so um, going back into beliefs, their belief system around being successful is going to be a lot easier. Their path is going to be so much easier than mine was because they're not going to have to deprogram all the programming that I had a program uh, or deprogram and, and they just, they don't have limited beliefs around women being successful. They just want everyone. They all are, aren't they? I mean, so all this noise, you know, women are, are starting business three and a half to one to men right now. And they're graduating almost double from universities and they're still creating less than 3% of the wealth. And that's not capping on salaries at all. That's wealth creation by women through through creating companies. And um, we still have a lot of uh, limited beliefs and noise going on in our heads that are keeping us from what we think is possible. And, and so I think it's really cool that this younger generation is seeing something a little bit different. And, you know, there's more 14 year old millionaires than I've ever been before. So that entire generation is like, well, I'm going to just go start selling something on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, thank you, Jen, so much for joining me here. This has been really great. I thank you. can't wait for the virtual version of your Jumpstart Connect. I definitely want to check that out when it happens. And I hope any listeners in the New York, Philadelphia area will go up to the Jumpstart uh, Connect pop-up store in New York in October. Thank I'll you. be sure to put some links to that in the show notes and everything. Please um, do. And, and we'll link to your books too. So you said, when was the next book coming out? What was the date for that? In November. In November. Okay, November. great. I'll look for that too. The, those all sound fascinating. I'm so pleased to have met you. Thank you. Likewise. And I look forward to staying connected. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank Bye. You so much. Bye.